Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Cyber Warrior, and this is Security Happy Hour. Today, I have two very special guests. I have Shannon Morse of Threatwire and Morse Code, and she has her own YouTube channel. has been doing huge things for the platform for cybersecurity and everything in general, especially privacy. Um, and then I have Davin, owner of Alpha Cybersecurity, and he's another guy that I've started following lately. And, and I'm sorry, Davin, I've been really late to the game and actually finding your name, so it was awesome to come across you uh, about two weeks ago. So glad to get okay. caught up and bring you two in um, to Security Happy Hour where it's all about fun. I mean, we're going to discuss security, but it's also about having our drinks, having a good time, and really getting to know everybody in the field. So to start off, um, let's start off with ladies first, and we're going to let Shannon go. And um, so basically tell us how you got into cybersecurity and especially your platform of privacy and security um you know what you're doing now and if you have any goals for the future of what you're trying to get to oh man you might have to remind me of like the second and third question you just asked game on <laughs> i got you <laughs> but I'm, I'm allowed to have the beers while i'm talking right damn straight go ahead <laughs> i'm kind of jealous that you have the yingling though i don't get yingling here in colorado <laughs> if i could mail it i would i told you that i i know you would i know but you know, the, oh, there, there's so many laws and regulations uh, uh, about alcohol shipments. So yeah, I know. we just have to like, we have to build our own breweries so that we could have like an InfoSec brewery across the nation and then we'll be able to ship each other beer. All right, so we're going to call it the, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll come up with a name for it. Actually, we'll work that out. We'll, we'll come up with a cyber beer or an alpha okay, cyber sounds, beer sounds or something good. like that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. I do have a background in restaurant and hospitality administration. Like that was my major in college. So nice. it's, I mean, like I know how I could totally start a restaurant. Hey, I got <laughs> the mini fridge to. in the office with beer. Just so you're aware. Perfect. Beer yes. monster. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're going to do a restaurant, my wife does custom cakes and desserts. So. <gasps> oh, that's even better. Oh, Perfect. so we're good. We're good. All right. All right. Back, back on topic. We'll, we'll get yeah. into the fun stuff. Okay. So, um, yes, my name is Shannon Morse. I go by snubs on the internet. That's S N U B S. And I started getting into information security a little bit over 10 years ago with a show on the internet called hack five. And we just like the reason that I fell into hack five at the time was just because we had mutual friends who were doing online video shows about video games. So I ended up meeting these guys at, this live programming that me and my friend went to in college and uh it was way up in canada and we drove up there from missouri and the hack five crew just happened to be there so i made friends with them ended up friending them on at the time myspace <laughs> yes it's a little embarrassing yes <laughs> <laughs> showing my age <laughs> hey you ain't the only one you're not the only one nope. but um uh, once I graduated college, I didn't really have a plan of action because even though I had majored in restaurant and hospitality administration, I didn't really want to go into that for my full job because, you know, you have to work on weekends and chances are you'll be working like 60, 70 hours a week if you're doing that, if you're working in that kind of industry. And I really wanted to step back and do something that would allow me to grow my own hobbies and grow my own career and do something that would actually pay better than being a restaurant owner, basically. And uh, I had always had this fascination with computers. So when I had met these guys and I had told them that I didn't really have a plan of action after college, they were like, well, move in with us in Virginia. So I did. And it was very scary for my mom. She was worried about me because I was this single one woman moving into a household with three dudes, one of which had a girlfriend at the time. And she was, she was just like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but good luck. And I was like, thanks mom. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so I had a full-time job at a bank when I first moved out there to Virginia to live with the hack five crew in the hack five house, which we called the hack house. And, uh, I was doing that full time doing hack five once a week. And it was like, in the evenings on Wednesday nights, I think. And half the time we were like tired as hell because all of us had these day jobs. But I ended up falling in love with security and privacy. 
uh, they they introduced me to different kinds of concepts. The co-host and the the cameraman that was working there at the time. They introduced me to all these different theories that I didn't realize were a thing at the time. I was introduced to Linux when I had first started there, and I was basically just like told, okay go buy yourself a really cheap laptop and we're going to put Linux on it. And I was like, okay, but I don't know what's going on. I like Windows. So I did it and I fell in love with it. So I fell in love with everything that has to do with security and privacy from understanding the, the roots of problems that people face day in and day out, understanding how the hacker mindset works and understanding how to like take apart hardware and put it back together and make it do things that it's not necessarily supposed to do. Like all of that, I I found this passion that I didn't realize I had, and it was all thanks to Hack Five. So I just kept on going, and now it's been ten years. Uh, I've I've done some crazy stuff. Like I've been in a Jason Bourne movie as an extra, and I've Real, been doing hold Hack up, Five. Wait, hold up, time out. <laughs> Which one? You were in Jason Bourne, and I did not know one. this. Yeah, the very last one. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Crazy. The whole Hack 5 crew was in it. That's I know, a- it's so weird, but I, I still have, like, I stole a little set piece from the set. They, they said extras couldn't take anything because, you know, consistency for the show or for the movie. But I definitely stole, like, a little badge off the set. <laughs> it was great. I was so excited about it. Yeah, it was just, like, one second thing, like, non-speaking role, not even credited or anything. But oh. you can see me. Boo. You can't see me for one second. And I had people like send me messages on Twitter and be like, was that you? And I was like, hell yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's great. I met Matt Damon. It was awesome. It was really cool. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Right, right. Yeah, so, so I've done some really amazing things. I've gotten to meet some incredible people through the past decade of doing this job. And it's made me respect and appreciate computer security and privacy so much more than I think I ever would have understood or ever ever even realized was even a potential possibility yeah. before getting that job at Hack5. So it's I, like I'm totally humbled every single day that I meet so many experts in the field who do incredible jobs and they are who I get to talk about or who I get to educate others about through my YouTube channel. And I think when when you ask like what's your goal what's the thing that you really want to do like what's your future look like my big goal with my channel is to introduce as many people as possible to security and privacy and i know that you know there's so many experts out here doing infosec work and doing cybersecurity who have these amazing roles they are the ones that are teaching me they're not my audience they're the people that are teaching me so i take what they teach me and i try to introduce it to you know, the normies, the consumers, so that they can look at security and privacy and think, oh, I can actually understand this. I yeah, can do this. Like, this is not sure. scary. And so many people find security and privacy scary. So I feel like I found this little niche that didn't really exist before I started doing my my own channel and doing like hack tips and stuff yeah. like that, where I'm introducing people to the, these concepts. And, and, I, think, and so, I love it. So I love, I love where you're going with it. I love your goals. Um, one of the things I, I, I want to kind of backtrack on, though, is and I'm going to let you know I despise in cybersecurity, and, and there's quite a other, few other fields, though, I despise the term expert. And the reason I do oh. is because it changes you know, I shouldn't have so said expert. much. And I listened to your first episode. <laughs> you Exactly. And you can – so what you can do is you can be an expert in a topic of cybersecurity. Yes. So yeah. if you're a reverse, I wouldn't even say reverse engineer or malware, because let's be honest, there's so many different types of malware that it's ridiculous. But you, you can, like whether it's scripting or coding or exploit development, whatever the case may be, it's very, I ain't yeah. going to say easy, but it's easier to get caught up to date on what's going on. But when people legitimately come out and be like, oh, I'm a cybersecurity expert. Really? <laughs> I'm like, no, really? you're not. <laughs> Is that possible? Because that's a lot of information There's, to take in. I, I'm just saying that's that's a lot. So I'll, I'll share some straight shade. I'll say, I'll share some shade. Like there's, better, a, there's a you, there's a cybersecurity expert uh-oh. who does uh-oh. a podcast, uh-oh. and he he's very very old school. So a lot of times he will 
put forth ideas and he will talk about recent news, especially if it has to do with like wireless penetration testing, which because of the hack five Wi-Fi pineapple, like that's my game. So anytime you hear him talk about it, I'm very like, what are we talking about right now? And I pay very, very close attention because he always gets stuff wrong. Like either it's about <laughs> just the wireless protocol or like he's tried to talk about like WPA or something and he screws something up. And I'm just like, really dude, like you've been in this game for so long, but he hasn't put forth the, uh, the time or the energy to continue educating himself. So he's sharing information based on like the 1990s. It's like, it's and like it a doctor. Freaking nuts. It's like a doctor. Like if you don't keep up on the newest technologies, the newest it is. things. Yeah. About, it, it, uh, look, I'm gonna go way off base. I'm gonna relate this to scrubs. So if y'all never watch scrubs, oh, I, mean, I love watch scrubs. scrubs, but they had a doctor that came in that was really old and did things old school that basically, I think it killed the guy or whatever, or, or basically caused a lot of damage, like unnecessary damage that it, it shouldn't have caused. <laughs> but it's because he refused to go to all the conferences and all the things to keep up the date on yeah. technology and the way the, the field was going. And I feel that way about cybersecurity. If you don't constantly research and keep up the date on everything, then you fall so far behind the eight ball. And, and I relate that too. I mean, you guys yeah. saw it in my video uh, that I posted yesterday. Like, what, even with diversity and, and, and gatekeeping and all that, if you're not willing to learn from other people, you're going to fall behind because you're going to be so reluctant to learn yes. from somebody that knows more than you just because of one reason or another. And I'm like, dude, like, I learn from every, I learn from my kids. I, I got five boys and I yeah. learned something new from they always coming up to me like, hey, dad, did you see this about this game? Like, what game are you even talking about? Like, what is this now? Like, yep. I had to ask my sister how to use an iPhone once because I use Android. And she's five years younger than me. And I I'm use, just I like, use iPhone. You, the best is. How do you turn off Wi-Fi on here? I don't know. Like, what, what's Yo, going on? It. Look, don't, don't, hit the, don't hit the drop down and click the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth button. All it does is disable further connections. It doesn't actually turn the Wi-Fi off. What? Yeah, yeah. I'll, we'll we'll okay. go through that. Well, but real quick, we gotta we gotta get to Davin and, and and dude, I gotta ask, man. Like, like I said, we talked a little bit earlier, and we've we've kind of gone through some things prior to recording. But please, man, give us a heads up on how you got into the game, where where you're at now, and hopefully where you want to go in the future as far as you know where you want to take Alpha Cybersecurity as a whole. So first of all. Can we curse? Yeah, go ahead, man. It's happy <laughs> hour. I don't care. I'm on a fucking show with snubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Big fan. And I was, I was, I'm sitting there the whole time like. <laughs> so, big fan. Second of all, um, Derek, I'm a little jealous of the beard. I got to. I gotta step mine up a little. Look, look, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let y'all know now. All right, I'm a, and, and Shannon, I told you you should have brought a fake beard to to the meeting. Um, this is my fake beard. <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna let y'all know now. If y'all become patrons or patrons or whatever they want to call them, in November, my wife is making me shave the beard because she doesn't like it. <gasps> Not this long. It's gonna wait, go wait, back wait, down to a groomed wait, beard, wait, as wait. as in my earlier videos. Oh, this is solely because. I'm being drunk Thor for Halloween. That is the only reason I'm allowed to grow it like I am. Nice. But it's for a good cause because it's Halloween and I'm going to be drunk Thor. I've got I've got the beer belly. <laughs> I've got the dad bod going on. I'm just getting the beard. And I told my wife, I said, I'll get a, I got to grow the beard, but I'll get a wig. I'm not, I'm not getting a fake beard. It's got to be real. A wig I'll do. Yes, I won't do a fake to. beard. You can't, you can't shave for no shave November. I told her that, and she wasn't with it. She got mad at me. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, I forgot about No Shave November. I, so. I don't have to shave either, right? <laughs> go ahead. You just go like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so uh, I'm Davin Jackson, also known as DJX Alpha on Twitter and Instagram. Hello, Davin. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> so, um... I run Alpha Cybersecurity, which is my blog site, uh, cybersecurity content, um, consulting on the side, and some other things that I'm working on. Uh, let's see. I've been in technology now for, geez, how old is my daughter? So about, about <laughs> 15 years now. 
And the reason why I say that is because um, I, after I got out of the Air Force, um, there were no fighter jets in the civilian world what? that I could work on. I, t- I, sh- tell me about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, you know, they give you the promise of, oh, when you get out, though, you can go get, you know, get your FAA license and all of that happy horror shit. And um, funny thing is, I wanted to do tech. I wanted to do tech when I got in, and the recruiter talked me into aircraft maintenance, and also offered me five thousand dollars and. 18 year old kid from the hood living out on his own sure give me the five grand after taxes it was more like two but whatever <laughs> they did that to me they did that to me <laughs> so i got out um and i i sold the story before but uh i tried different things i i wanted to be an electrician until i fell off of a ladder and then i fell off of another ladder <laughs> and then i fell off of a 25 foot ladder and once I was once I realized I was able to walk, I walked off the job site and went home because I was tired of falling off of freaking ladders. <laughs> so uh, my wife, or she was my girlfriend at the time, basically, like I said, we have my daughter and um, she just kind of sat me down. I was like, listen, the fuck you want to do? <laughs> so I, I credit her with it because it was just kind of like, listen, you, we got a child. We trying to build a future. You know, you can't keep falling off of ladders. You know, you got to do something. So, like I said, I was always into tech. So, I, you know, even when I was younger, I used to tinker with stuff at my grandmother's house, who was really uh, supportive of it as long as I could put it back together and it still worked. Otherwise, I would get in a whole lot of trouble. Um, and then, like I said, but growing up, you know, going growing up where we grew up, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for uh, to get into tech. It was either we thought we weren't smart enough or we just didn't have the resources. So it was just kind of like a stick to what you know type thing. Um, So like I said, once I realized I can get into tech and uh, get certifications instead of actually going back to college, I was like, oh, let's do it. So not to show my age, but um, to get my foot in the door, the first job I had was at Circuit City as a fire. Oh my gosh. I've worked there. I've worked there. So I was the home, I was the home theater installed tech. And I talked the manager into giving me another $2 an hour. And basically when I wasn't installing home theaters, I would go work at the, 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 the repair bench. So that's how I got my foot in the door. And then I just kind of built it from there doing help desk, network support, and then worked my way up to basically this admin. And then I transitioned over to cybersecurity uh, when I started working for a school system and we kept getting hit with ransomware attacks and stuff like that. So I started off trying to figure out how to be, you know, more on the defensive side. So I actually started out protecting kids, uh, the special education kids, because they were getting their iPad stolen. So I had to put Meraki on there and, you know, track the iPads. That's and all so that. cool. Yeah. And then um, once I did that, we started looking at vulnerabilities. And of course, when we started looking at vulnerabilities, it was like pen testing. And I was introduced to CEH like when I first started, but I was just like, yeah, I'll never get there. And then I'm like, and then when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, okay. So I brought it to my boss who at that time was okay with me doing everything cybersecurity related because I was just doing it on the side. But as soon as I said, hey, we should make this official, there was no money in the budget. Oh, right. Of course. Yeah. So basically by that time I had saved up a bunch of money anyway. So I paid to go down to Virginia for like a week, take a boot camp course from uh, Keytron Evans on pen testing, came back. Hold up, hold up, time out. Did you just say yep. Keytron Evans? Yeah. That man that taught me very- certified ethical hacking. <laughs> that man is the reason wow, why in September, world. on September 22nd at Inspire, I will be named in the InfoSec Institute's Hall of Fame for cybersecurity. Nice. Well, yep, he was, he was, and it, and for me to go down there and see that there was somebody who looked like me teaching this course, it was just like, it was everything to me. So, um, you know, like I said, so I kept in contact with him for a little bit. Um, I got my CEH and my CPT from the, from there. <laughs> I, yep. No. <laughs> right there. That's the CPT right there. Yep. No one knows so, what the IACRB CPT is, but I got it. <laughs> what I, the IACRB CPT? I got that, and I got the forensics one. So, um, but yeah, so I so like I said, so he I drove down there, 
learned as much as I could from him for a week. I mean, he was really cool. Like we stayed up till one, two in the morning in the lab doing the so, work. So, so let me let me let me pause you right there, just because we have the same instructor and it's awesome. Because I know Keytron. I talked to him. He's been one of my mentors through my. As soon as I got into, as soon as I met him, I, I, he's become a mentor of mine. And I loved Infosec Institute, especially Keytron, because. Yeah, they claim this great pass rate, and let's be, let's be honest, it, it is. It's like 96 97%, maybe even higher at this point. Who knows? But I loved Keytron because of the way he taught the course. He taught it in such a way that he taught you how to do the job. So yeah. it wasn't like a lot of these boot camps and things you go through where you get these guys that may be in the field, may not. They, they, they're, they're teaching you the test. I loved yeah. Keytron because... He was either half helped write or something of chained exploits, and this man mm -hmm. literally showed me how to his exploit, where he could drop it on the windows, hide itself from processes, from net stat, from everything, and then to do his cleanup, he blue screened the server. Yep. Yeah. He, so he he didn't, wow. he didn't show it to me, but he told me about Dude, it. Dude, it was legit. He goes, "What do what do admins do when something blue screens? They reformat it. What? Guess yeah. what? They've already done your cleanup for you." And it's I was like, covered. "Holy <laughs> Christ, they, that's ingenious!" Yeah, they, cover, <laughs> yep, they cover your tracks for you. Yep. Yep. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, dude, that's awesome. I did not know you knew Keytron. That between yep. him and Ty Wilson, like me and Ty Wilson um, from Cover Six Solutions, talk a lot too. Yeah. Like it's crazy that all like all three of you know like you know Keytron, I know Keytron, and then we both know Ty Wilson because yeah. I'm funny talking thing, amazing people that have helped me in my career. And Ty and Ty's actually we actually have a mutual friend because uh, either his brother played football at UConn, one of my close friends. So so my friend told me about Ty like months before I even met him, and then Ty just calls me one day and was like, "Listen." We got it. We got to do something. I was like, let's go. So, so yeah. And he's been, honestly, he's been, he's been a major influence. Honestly, he's probably one of the three or four people that brought me back into InfoTech when I, but I was done a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so where do you intend to go from here? Right. You're doing so many things. You've got alpha cybersecurity. You've got the blog. You're doing pen testing. I mean, you've met Keytron, and, and like I said, me and you both agree. The dude's a great mentor. Ty is a great mentor. We both love Threatwire and Shannon Morris's stuff. Like me and you, as veterans, got a lot in common going on here right now. So, where do you intend to go from here? What's your What's your end game, or not even necessarily end game, but five, ten years from now? Where do you want to take yourself? So, five, ten years from now. So basically, what I want to do is, like I said. When I first walked into that InfoSec class and saw Keytron, representation means everything. So my goal is to bring as many people from the same communities that I came up in. I can't speak for anybody else here, but from the same communities I came up in, it showed them that, you know what, there's other ways to do it other than what we've been accustomed to seeing, which is being good at sports or doing something illegal, right? So... Um, my goal is to kind of bring that to the forefront like and show them like listen i wasn't the best high school student i did i chased i chased the girls and did all the right. other not me and, and you, all of that dude, me and you both and look i i you know i i, I didn't get no scholarships <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? I, I, I came up how I came up, but look, you know what? I, yeah, I might not have the millions, but i'm doing okay and guess what i don't have to worry about it and not for nothing i can do things that are deemed illegal for fun and get paid for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can, for sure. I, I can hack shit. I can break into buildings. I can lie and I can lie to security officers and trick people into doing certain things. And I can get paid for it. I, I, I mean, I could tell some stories without saying names for NDA purposes. But I mean, I've been <laughs> into Fortune 500 companies and done all types of crazy shit that I never would have been able to do had I had my wife never told me to get my shit together. <laughs> and then we, I, and we I need went. to collaborate, man. We need we need to do more together, Davin. We we definitely do. I well, see big things. I see because we both I'm have here. the same idea. Because the idea is, and the whole reason to this show is because if you look at every podcast, every YouTube channel that has people on, they have the big names. 
They have the names of the people that everybody knows, whether it's because, hey, we want to in, in, instruct people, we want views, whatever the case may be, whatever the reasoning is be behind it. The reason I have you two on, I'm not going to lie, besides the fact that I love what you guys are doing, and I really do. Shannon, you know I've been following Threatwire and, and your channel for ages now. Um you know, is because I want to get not only your voices heard, but by bringing that in, I attract the people that wouldn't necessarily listen to the little guy. So the two people I had on last week that are new to yeah. the game would not get recognized if I don't bring on other people that are recognized. So then the right. channel doesn't get followed. You know, from the perspective of somebody who interviews people all the time at conventions, 100%. Like, oftentimes I will find... I'll have like fallback people, people that I know present really well and talk really well and can explain their opinions in front of a camera without shying away from the camera or shying away from a microphone. And I will like continually talk to them again and again because I know that they will be good on camera. So the fact that you're bringing in like new blood is so, so great for this industry because uh, you don't see a lot of that right now. You don't see a lot of presenters bringing on people who may have never actually presented before, who have never given a talk at a convention. So hearing from these new voices, it's like, it's it's bringing me new talent. So I appreciate it from that perspective. Sure. Like when I see these people at a talk, I'm going to be like, oh, they were on his podcast. So I'm definitely going to ask him if I can interview him after he's done with his talk. So you are introducing people to this much wider range of an audience that they may not have had before this. And, and that's, and, the, go ahead. I was gonna say, and, let, and let's be honest, right? Um, a lot of the big names, they're big names because they show up for only the big events. So they, they'll they show oh, yeah. up for a DEF CON or a Black Hat or, you know, so to reach, and, and one of the things that bothered me um, was, you know, how they tell you to find a mentor when you first get in. Um, I couldn't, right? Uh, I would reach out to Keytron every here and there, but I know Keytron is super Dude, busy. So he, he got four companies, four. I asked him right. four right. companies. Wow. <laughs> but, but oh my you gosh. Know, you know, the one thing I respected about him is it would go, I would, I would ask him for something and I wouldn't hear him for months. Right. And it would sometimes be like eh, f him. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then months later he go. I'm just seeing this. What's up? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Forget it now. You know, whatever, right? <laughs> or, if I, or if I still have a question, um, honestly, when I wanted to start the blog and the come that kind of was like, well, what is it that you want to do? You have to make sure you make sure you have your paperwork and your insurance and all that. So that's why I kind of shied away from doing full on pen testing at first. Cause I was like, let me build up stuff and save the money to get everything if I want to do pen testing on my own. For sure. But um, but a lot of people. And, it, and it's funny, a lot of people that I reached out to, you know, they didn't. They didn't reach back. They they leave me on red, you know, I or I would so or just flat out ignore me. So. So another thing, when I got to a point where I felt like I could help, that's why you'll notice I'll read. I will answer every I'll try to answer every message. I answer every email because I know what it felt like to be that that one coming up that was like. Can I can can I ask you a question? And it was like completely ignored, right? So that's so so you doing this again. This also inspires the people who are just coming in now. It's like okay, so maybe I maybe I can't reach the a, 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 a Kevin Mitnick or something like that. He's a piece of work. I'm just using his name for anything. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I can maybe I can reach. Shannon, maybe I could reach Derek, maybe I could reach Davin, yeah. maybe I could reach Ty, you know what I'm saying? Maybe uh, JB, uh, J Bizzle on Twitter, you know. So now, and, and what I did with what I did with Twitter is I tried to surround myself with anybody who I saw that was willing to help, right? No matter what, whatever, who, who was willing to help and, and, and just point, at least point you in the right direction. And that's that's just kind of where I'm at with it. And, and right? that's and that's huge, man. That's huge because so it's funny. I got on Discord. I've been on Discord for a while, channels off and on, but I found some security channels. So security blue team, and again, that's where I met the two guys that I that I had on last week. 
I got on that, um, and I forget what the reason was. I, I just happened to find someone posted something about the, the course or Chimera or something like that. So I jumped on the Discord. No intention whatsoever of doing a blue team security challenge. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I was doing blue team stuff at the time. I had no intention of doing it. But I wanted to get in the community. So I became a moderator on the Discord channel because of the advice I gave to the other people there. And it was one of my big things. And I realized no matter... And my job's probably going to hate me for saying this, but I, <laughs> no matter how much work I do for a company, I get more satisfaction and more, um, I feel more validated by seeing other people succeed. So where, and I've seen people talk about it in the past where, um, and I've seen music videos and I've talked about some of them, but I've seen them where they talk about how. You know, people will tell you they're proud of you or congratulations, but not mean it. They're actually jealous or want to see you fail or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and I talked about that in, in one of my videos. But for me, I truly do feel proud and, I'm, and, and feel, you know, joy by seeing other people excel. Whether even it's above me, below me, whatever, as long as they're reaching for something and achieving it. And I know I've made a difference to help get them there. Um, and that's the big thing for me is I've always wanted to make a difference in this world. That That's why I joined the military. That's why I've done the different cybersecurity jobs that I've done is because I want to make a difference. I have I always felt like, oh, if I could be a, you know, a security guy for a company, then I can make a difference. And my first job, I didn't feel like it. My second job, I felt like I did all right. You know, I, I got recognized by my, you know, my prior uh um, employer for doing a good job, but I still was kind of like, I feel like companies don't listen, you know, they don't, they don't care what you say. And then I got this job and I still feel like companies don't care what you say. So for me, it's about reaching the people. It's about reaching the people that, you know, if they want to do great things in the, in their career field and make, and, and I hate to say make money, but let's be real money does, help, you know, is a driving factor in some people's lives. You know, if that's what they want to do, as long as I can help them get there and reach that next level, then I'm happy. That's that I, I, I tell my wife all the time. I find joy in helping others. I find joy in helping her and, you know, my kids Me and too. things like that. That's where I get my happiness from. So to see, you know, Shannon, I see you all the time putting stuff out on privacy and security. Dab and I've been, you know, I got all your videos to go through. Like I said, I'm late to the game to follow you, but I'll get through your videos. But I, I did see your talk on know yourself and know what you want to do and, you know, your stuff about, oh, you oh, know, no, Chad, no Chadwick Bosman and stuff like that. And it's it's huge in this industry. We have so many people that want to um, degrade others. We have so many people that want to, mm -hmm. you know, gatekeep and things like that. And I, I just can't I can't take it because why are we holding people back <laughs> same <laughs> when we can be lifting each other up why are we why is a community that let's be real we could be anonymous we all know how in this community we know how to hide ourselves and hide ourselves damn yep. well but we put ourselves and we probably out do there. on different accounts or at least I do <laughs> right like and shannon i'm gonna tell you right now i'm a little mad it took till today or maybe last night for you to actually follow me on twitter so we're gonna be fighting about that one later okay <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know what your twitter handle was i told you forever ago <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many people send me tweets yeah everything? i know oh i know gosh. But not. Nah, I just it's hard to keep track. I do. I I'm love. I love you guys. And and Davin, <laughs> I, I do think me and you need to collaborate. Shannon, we talked about what my goal is in the long run. Yes. This isn't about me, but I do want to bring you two into right. the end game of where I'm trying to get to. But on the note of helping everybody, and normally I would do two articles. That's kind of my point to this is discuss stuff that's current in the news but you guys have such interesting topics and so, such depth at what you guys have been through and what you have seen in industry what is the biggest driving factor what can we do today to help change and help influence those that are coming into it as far as whether it be 
corporations looking to hire that don't know what the hell they're doing asking for a CISP and a junior security analyst. I mean, let's be honest. I, I've seen it. I don't know if any of you have, but I have. I mean, what well, can I, we I, do I, to help I, influence I, I, these people? So I'll go first if that's okay. Um, my husband is a director of HR at his own company, which has nothing to do with cybersecurity, but it, he's more in the health sector. He works with a lot of hospitals. So he, he has seen and experienced what it's like to be, you know, a white male who's in charge in HR and having people come to him about diversity issues and things like that, that he has never experienced himself because he, his own personal life, like growing up the way he did, like that's not his experience. So he's related some of those stories to me, of course, keeping them anonymous um, and just kind of asked for my perspective as a woman because he's never experienced those himself. And it's really interesting because a lot of the things that he has had people come to him about, I've experienced myself, whether that's like sexual harassment in the workplace or unconscious bias or very, very direct bias that people realize they're doing, but they just, they want to gaslight you. Like those are things that so many minorities in information security and cybersecurity have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think combating it from like a young age, and that's part of the reason why I'm trying to educate so many people on security and privacy through my own channels, starting at a much younger age and trying to teach people like not to focus so much on differences between people not to focus on like who's a minority and who's not and like what are our differences but comparing our livelihoods or comparing our our, our histories and talking about our cultures and talking about how we have grown up and how we have combated all the all the fights that we have had to deal with um to get to where we are now i think that it would be really good to share those kind of stories because if you just, and this is something that I, I think a lot of people have heard and have experienced themselves. If you just hire people that look like you, if you just hire people that sound like you, that are the same age as you or whatever it might be, then you're never going to grow. Your company is never going to grow. So, And so that's something that I've tried to relate to so many people. So let's, let's take that back real quick because I seen a post on LinkedIn, um, I think it was this morning, and the lady is basically she helps um, helps businesses and uh, small business owners and things like that grow and things like that. That's kind of her her niche, um, or at least that's what I got from the video. So she had a client call her, and he was worried about diversity. Um, and and I mean this is really I I've got the only thing I'm missing is is a black female at this point as far as you know in the US I mean there's Hispanics and other races but as far as what's big right now but the guy complained he goes I don't feel like my company's diverse my entire board is white males and she said well why did you hire them and I think that's what we miss in in some cases and and but mm -hmm. she said why did you hire them she said were they the right men for the job as far as what you saw, were they the right men for the job? And he said, yeah. He was like, but I feel like I'm not being diverse. I'm not being, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not bringing in everybody that I can. And she said, but were they the right men for the job? That's the question. Intelligence, the knowledge they had to help you with your company, were they the right men for the job to get you to where you wanted to go? And he said, yeah. She was like, if you replace them with anybody else to try to bring diversity as far as culture, now you're being racist or now you're being sexist because See, that's, now that's you're trying I... to do something not based on knowledge, not based on helping you, but based on race, sex, age, whatever the case may be. So do we see that as a problem going forward with a lot of the push where Everybody has to be included, but some people are going to get caught up in this. Well, I have to be diverse, so I can't hire the best person for the job type of thing. So See, that's right. oh, go ahead, Devin. So I think it's it, it. There's two parts to that. So on one hand, that's kind of the reason why I want to do what I want to what I want to do with bringing in people in in training from these communities because, like I said, when I grew up, 
we we were told we weren't smart enough. Right. Okay. We you were either white, Asian, or Indian, male. That's it. Okay. So you ha- so so we have to bring in more more people of color, and there are more people of color, but I don't know this person's scenario. But is it was they they were the right person for the job because they were the right person for the job, or they were the right person for the job because that's how they felt? Exactly, and that's I think she asked that question, and I get your point to that because when you go by based on what you feel. You you can you can say oh well they look like me they act like me so I feel like they're the best person for the job they not have, they, they have, have the, the best up- knowledge or they're gonna get me to where I need to go they, or they had the same upbringing so for example I didn't go to college I didn't go to, I didn't go to college I came from Bridgeport Connecticut it's not it's not where you go to see the leaves fall in the in, in, in the autumn time it, 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 you don't want to go right you don't it's, you're not going there for vacation or, or to hang out. And I say that because now there have been times where I know I'm more qualified, but because of who I am, where I'm from, and the fact that I didn't go to college, someone else who's mediocre Matt got hired over me, right? Why? Because they came from the college. They have the references. They know certain people in the the industry. So, yeah. You may feel they're the right person for the job, but every once in a while, no, I, I would say sometimes you take a chance. I mean, unless it's something that's like super critical, right? Like if it's, if it's like infrastructure, it's something that's like super critical where lives are at stake. But guess what? It goes back to that same circle of I can't get a job because I don't have experience. But it's I need a circle. But, but yep. yeah, but I need to, to gain the experience. Exactly. Yep. You're not giving anybody the chance, right? So that's why you can have people who, like me, had to come up from basically damn near volunteering at Circuit City and spending all my off time at Circuit City just to get, just so I could say on my resume that I have IT experience, as opposed to someone who went to college, got their uh, their, their, their associate's degree in some bullshit, and now they got a job over me. You know what I'm saying? So... So it, 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 kind of- it is. It's an endless cycle. And funny enough about that, so I was working for the Department of Energy. I was a, a subcontractor to a subcontractor. It was kind of weird. But DOE was offering up a job for their, I want to say it was help desk or sysadmin, something along those lines. And I was in college at the time, and I think I was about to graduate. And this was before I went active duty Army because I was in the Guard initially. And I went to the guy and I said, okay, hey. I want to work here. And he said, well, you got to have, I think, a 3.6 or 3.8 GPA in college. I said, hold up. Time out. I said, I've been doing this job for how long? I've been fixing some computers since I was seven. I've got certifications from Microsoft, and I'll have certifications from Cisco. And you're telling me because I don't have the right GPA, you will not hire me. And he said, that is Department of Energy's regulations. You have to have a 3-point-something GPA. I was like... He was like, but if you have a CCIE, I'll hire you for six figures on the spot. I'm like, I got to be 40 to have a CCIE and sponsored by a company. Jeez. What the hell are you talking about? So, like I said, I've made plenty of people look good off of my off of, off of the work I put in. Right? <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the crazy thing is, like, they, they're... They don't even care. They're like, man, I, I submitted your report and I submitted this and the board loved it. But then when they come down for the accolades, they get it. And there's no recognition. Not even, you know, and, yeah. and I'm not here and I'm not here for the accolades and all of that. No, no, like, no. You're literally, I, I mean, you might as well just take my fucking name off of it and, and, and sign, sign yourself, right? I mean, I have done certain things where and and again privately and i think i said this in a um on a talk i was a panel i was on a couple weeks ago so many people will pull me to the side and say man you're awesome right you're awesome you're great right but you're telling me this in private i don't need not to sound cocky i don't need to hear it i know i know i'm good at what i do yep do me a favor go out there and go tell them yep so when they so when that when 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 they're looking for people that they want to build up and they want to elevate, put my name in there. Instead, it's like you're great, but then you come out, you go out here, and it's kind of like I'm great. You know, 
And, and, it's, and it's funny you say that. It, it is because, again, that comes down to what I think you and Shannon and myself and, and other people that I know really want to do is elevate others. You know, that's why I love this channel because guess what? I'm going to put both your faces on, on YouTube, this video, YouTube, and yes, I'm leaving all this in. I don't care what people think about me and on a podcast because I want people to see other people doing great things. I want people right. to see that no matter what you look like, no matter how you act, you can do great things and be big in industry and it should not matter nothing should matter about that it should be about your knowledge and what you have in your head that's that's what should matter what is your ability not oh uh well i can't hire shannon because she's a female or 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 let's take for example the message i sent last night we're gonna talk bad about azaria because she's a female and she doesn't deserve to be an infosec come on get off that nonsense i watched your video let's be real and it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what they look like. Why can't we all be included? And as far as gatekeeping goes and what we see, and Davin, I know you've seen it in industry. I know, Shannon, you've seen it because you've talked to a lot of these people that do the same thing. Is, you know, take someone like myself who I'm trying to make a name for myself. I'm trying to, to break through and be able to go to things like Black Hat and DEF CON and you know, B-sides and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's those big names. It's it's the ones that want to be like, oh, I'm better than everybody else. That's going to hold everybody else back. Shannon, you've been in it. It took you how long to get to the point where you can go to these talks, go to these conferences just to interview people. And as great as that is, it should not have taken as long as it did because of the fact we have people that are trying to hold others back and that's the problem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's crazy how much bias you see in the cybersecurity community. And I think you see a lot more of it whenever you do become a part of the community because people latch on and they, they get angry at people who have success. I mean, that's basically, that's basically what what happens and what we see, especially if you are a minority. Like there's so there's still so much bias in this industry that people feel like you don't deserve it, even if you've gone through and done everything that somebody else who doesn't look like you or is a different gender or it matches some kind of other stereotype. Uh, yep. Even if you have done exactly what they have to get to where you are and, in this and why, industry, and why why and I said this on Twitter the other day, why de Why do you feel demasculated because somebody knows as much as you or more than you? Because let's be real, when it comes to women, that's what it comes down to. It's low PP syndrome, come on now, let's be real. <laughs> they, they feel so, demasculated. I'm sorry, my wife has wiped me out on more than one occasion when it comes to common sense and some other intelligence factors. And when it comes to being creativity and building things, yes, I'm technically a man, that woman can build better than I can. I'll be honest. Well, I'm a computer guy. If it's not on a computer screen, I'm kind of like, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, um, and I guess, I, and hell, I said the same thing. Again, my wife is the reason why I'm probably here right now. My wife, back to the creativity thing, like I said, she has custom cakes, one's dream cakes and treats. She'd kill me if I didn't plug her. Code. Send me that message. Send me that message. I've been telling my wife to sell shit. Send me that because I, I will order some shit. I will do it. So, um, but yeah, but like I said, she's the reason why I'm where I'm at. She, like I said, I'm not standing in front of you today if it wasn't for her and my children. Right? Now, yeah, some of that is me wanting to do right by them, but where I was heading before me and her got together and where I'm at now, it's two different directions. And unfortunately, you won't have most men that will say that in, in this industry. Oh, no, now, no. Now, to, 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 to Shannon's point, or actually to what you were saying about trying to build a name for yourself, which leads to why I said the last time I was like, I, I need to step away and figure out something. Maybe I'll go do some sit-ups and be a male stripper or something. I don't know. But... um. A totally legitimate thing to do. 
<laughs> it is. It is. Come on now. It's real. I'm going to get an OnlyFans. But anyway. <laughs> people, keep on, people keep on asking me to create an OnlyFans, and I don't think it's going to happen. I don't mean, do I it, Shannon. Don't do it. Of, I could post nudes, but they're going to be like noodles. Like yes! spaghetti noodles. So... <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, to my, but to the point is, now imagine trying to make a name for yourself while having to validate your reason for being here mm -hmm. day in and day out. Yes, 100%. I've, I've literally posted articles on certain things and the first, and comments and what gives you the authority to say something? What gives you the authority to, to, to write this blog post? Uh, I paid for the domain. <laughs> right? Besides that, I, but besides that, I also have, I don't know, last time I counted something like 20 some odd active certifications. But I mean, if you want to get into a if you want to get into a con contest, let, let's go. Right. But I don't that that's not who I am. Um, no, and Davin, it, it, Davin, you remind me a lot of me because you talked about not chasing accolades. And, and this is dude, man, like we are on the same wavelength here. It's crazy yeah, because like, even in the military. I didn't chase awards. You had people that would ask, like, oh, where's my award at? Where's this at? Where's this at? And it was me, like, they gave me a PCS award. I'm like, I'm leaving. What the hell are you giving me an award for? Like, I, I really <laughs> don't care. I deployed, and they're like, oh, here's an award for deploying. And I'm like, okay. You have people with racks on their chest. And I'm just like, did you actually do anything? Or was that because you've moved 20 times and you've deployed oh, 10? I'll, like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It took me a while to appreciate when people would say thank you for your service shannon okay. i lost your video feed it's okay i'm okay. still here my okay. camera just overheated right. oh so I'm switching it, it made me uncomfortable in the beginning when people would go thank you because i'm like there are so many people who did so much more and right? i feel the That's same way man like i deployed once i'm not gonna lie i deployed once to kuwait kuwait of all things these days, Fort Hood is more of a deployment than Kuwait, if you've seen what's been going on. But, I I mean, I was there, and to me it was a deployment because I was away from family, but I've spent so much time away from family that my wife, like, when we moved, I was finally at a point, like, I'm done. Like, I got disability retirement, I was done, I was like, I can't do this no more. And I feel like this industry, at this point, is just taking away and devaluing everything people bring to the table kind of like so, the military does the military gives awards like candy and they devalue truly what people bring to the table because it's like oh if you don't go to this conference then you're not important if you don't speak you or if you don't post or, or get a cve or a bug bounty then you're not important it's like why do i have to have something on paper you want paper? Look behind me. I've got five SAN certifications. Can you say the same damn thing? I've got an OSCP. Can you say the same damn thing? Because I know people that are doing pen testing that can't get a damn OSCP. I know people that are doing the job that can't get a GREM. So can you really hold foot? You know. What? Hold on. Wait. 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 One of my biggest articles that i've ever written was the fact that i failed my osc dude but i failed it, 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 it i failed, failed it the first, first time you on the report but i actually but i failed it because like i said I, I it was more about the burnout and everything that led up to it with the unrealistic expectations i set myself for myself so i'm whatever but yeah like i said it's and the part that's crazy um and shout out to to cody winkler um we did i did his uh show the, a couple weeks ago the community where the man wrote the hacker manifesto has become the most toxic and divisive community. So right? has OSCP. Yes, it has. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> one thing at a time. So, um, you know, this this manifesto where it was just like, you know, everybody of all walks of life and everything should, you know, no matter. Except they didn't include that. gender. Yeah. Right. Yes. Apparently, gender is not important in that. Shannon, yeah, you're not important. Not. You don't need that. You need. You don't need to be included. <laughs> but, but you know, and like I said, and it, it's just, it's frustrating when you see. I mean, for one, yeah, like I said, I'm not. I'm not here to get in get in a pissing contest with anybody. Hell, I'm. I'm the first one to tell you, 
with all my certifications, with all my years of experience, if you ask me, I still consider myself to be a new. Mm-hmm. Why? Because that means I'm still that means I'm still learning and I'm still eager to learn. And yep. that's never and I'm never gonna let my ego get ahead of me, right? Because that's 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 and to your point, that's the big thing. You have these people who feel like they should just be there because they should just be there. Yep. It's 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 the it's it's almost like an elevated version of white privilege where they feel like I'm here because I was here this whole time and look at me. So who are you to tell me because I have these accolades or I talked at this one conference one time or I spoke to the government about this, you know. So and that's and that's what blows my mind. So so let's let's look at that because I can't I me is who I am and how I feel. I do. I have a wall of search behind me. And I do that because, and I talked about it in my um, uh, imposter syndrome video and motivation. When I get in my head and I, and I think I'm not good enough, I realize what I have accomplished. It's the only reason these are behind me is because I know what I've done and I know what I can do. It's not to brag. It's not to be, oh, I have all this. It's because it's a reminder of I started in high school with Microsoft Office certifications and I'm now here. And I think that's the big thing is reminding yourself of where you came from. Davin, as someone who came from nothing, who came from coming up in it and and your wife and girlfriend, you know, girlfriend to wife, putting a boot in your ass and basically saying, get your shit together and figure out your life. Like Shannon, who... It's taken 10 years to get to where you're at, and I, I don't know why, but my video freezes one at a time. It's bugging me, but, uh, you know, we're going <laughs> to leave that as it may. You look fine on this end. All yeah. right, cool. No, it's only, like, one person at a time. It's either you or Davin that freezes individually. It's <laughs> so weird. But, you know, seeing where you two came from and the fact of how you came up, like, that's where I find my motivation. That's where I find, you know, for me... That's what motivates me is seeing people able to make it that have come from nothing. And I came from building computers at seven years old while fixing them. I didn't build them until I was in the Air, Air Force. But it was it, it came from that. Like, and seeing you guys and seeing other people struggling to make a name for themselves solely because, unfortunately, you have to make a name for yourself. Because there's so, people that get on. called for talks at Black Hat. There's get, there's people that get called for talks at DEF CON. Oh you don't have what to submit an RFP. They get oh, no, phone was, calls I, and paid I, I, to go talk there. Yet anybody right. trying to make a name for themselves has to submit a talk and hopefully get in. Yet right. you got people that get phone calls. Why can't everybody submit an RFP? And 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 the funny thing is, that's what I think that's what led to us even meeting. Excuse me. So I was going to show my wall, but you see how I had a wall similar. I took all mine down. I took all of them down because when I said I said I was done, right? I I like mm-hmm. I did that I how I did it, it was my wall to remind me of where I'm at and I always left one frame blank to always remind me that I'm not done. Right? That's awesome. And that's that that would I would always look at it and go, I need to fill that I need to fill that empty one. But when I, like I said, but a couple months ago, when I said I was done, and and the crazy thing about it, it was it was during the event for the Share the Mic and Cyber, which was an awesome event to elevate voices. And even though I participated in it, and shout out to Selena Larson because that was my partner, and she and she was she was definitely awesome at work to work with. Mentally, I was I checked out, so I went to I don't know if you guys I, I did a talk that during the same day while the event was happening because I wanted to make sure I chronicled it as it was happening because I wanted to catch how I felt, but I also wanted to catch, I wanted everybody to see where I was, right? Because one of the things that I said I wanted to do, which which led to that OSCP article that I talked about was I'm not showing all the, all the, 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 the you know, fireworks and the flashy shit, right? I want you to see the imposter syndrome. I want you to see the setbacks. Why? Because I I want you to know that it's going to take work, but damn it, it's worth it 
if you stick to it, if you choose to stick to it and choose to stay dedicated. And I couldn't, I couldn't relay that message to people without feeling like a hypocrite. So that's why I was like, I needed to step away and figure out what the hell I needed to do. And the crazy thing is stepping away made me realize I love, I love this field. You love what you do. I love what I do. I just don't like the nonsense that goes along with it. Well, well, right? well, look at that and look at what, look at what Shannon and everybody else has been through. I mean, we see Twitter every day. We see the InfoSec community and how toxic it can be. And that's my point. So how can, so how can I be an agent of change if I'm on the sideline? Right. Mm -hmm. So now I see Shannon and I, and I'm like, like I said, I'm a big fan. And it's like, why is she just getting her flowers now? Mm -hmm. I see people like Caitlin Bowden who who does amazing work. Met her right? at B Sides Pittsburgh. Awesome woman. She does great <laughs> things for what she's doing uh, for the badass nation. I, I see in I see Angie Jones who's an amazing developed Java developer, right? I see these people and again and I'm and these these are women, but then like I said, or I see like I said, I see I see a Ty Wilson, I see a Marcus J. Carey. Do it I see, all the time. You know, I, and like I said, and Marcus, again, he's another one who, when I was going through it, he called, he, he was like, yo, call me right now. It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And he was like, call me right now. And I called him and we talked and, and he kind of talked me off the ledge. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, so my thing was, how can I sit here and be someone who wants to make a difference if I'm not there to make a difference? Right, right. Which so so which brings me back and then the, and then that's where we where we ended up linking up because i said okay i can't talk at these i can't get i can't get into these cons right because see the other thing is all my talks i try to incorporate something that you can relate to right so yeah i did my my sans talk for apis the other day but that was probably my first straight up technical talk that i've ever done Everything that I've ever done, I try to relay to whoever the audience is or to real life. So I did a talk at a camp for kids, and I compared the five the five or six phases of pen testing to playing Fortnite, how to be good at Fortnite, right? Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, and these are just, these are different things that I do, or or even I did a talk on how to ask how to properly ask somebody for help online. These are things that and then I'll put the I'll put the talks up. I'll put the polls up. Hell, I put up something the other day about just how to install VirtualBox on your computer, right? And I said, let me see something. And I posted it in a hack the box group on Facebook, and they killed me. Oh, if you don't know how to do this, you shouldn't be in cybersecurity. And my response was, so you just knew how when you decided you wanted to get in cybersecurity, you, security, you just. You just knew how to install it. Have you have you seen my Paratech <laughs> videos, dude? I go basic and I right. uh, I pull out my Linux basics for hackers book in my Paratech playlist, and well, I, I can't do tell things you, in there. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people have come up to me at conventions, like notable notable people in the industry, and have said, you know, I still I still Google your hack tips because I forget this command in Linux, and I just and I'm just like. I do too. That's why I made the videos so that yeah. I can find them later. Dude, it's like it's we have these people, but we have these people who feel like you know they're just whatever. And it's like you know what? Like I said, when I, when I was going through it, Marcus introduced me to the book called The Four Agreements. Right, and it's it's up there. Ah. so this book right here, right. And it talked about the four things you should do that you should practice every day so that no matter what, you're good with yourself. So the first one is, you know, always to be impeccable with your word, which is, you know, obviously always be honest and stick to your word. The second one is never take anything personally. Always do your best and don't make assumptions, right? So you have, so as long as, and the, the concept of the book is as long as you follow those four rules, you'll, you should be fine. And Marcus said, he, you know, he, gives that to everybody who he mentors or gets into cybersecurity, tells them to get into cybersecurity. So now when I deal with certain people, I'm like, all right, you know what? It's, it clearly is not an issue with me or it's not an issue 
it's an issue with them, right? But it's it still gets frustrating when you see, like I said, what happened with his area, or um, the other. I don't I, I don't want to give him more another fifteen minutes, but the other guy who was basically challenging everybody, every female in Infosec, and between Alyssa and Ian, uh, they oh, yeah. completely, they completely murdered him. Which was awesome because I've never seen someone get killed. These guys better start watching out because a lot of us are friends with, you know, yeah, U.S. Yeah. agencies and stuff. Well, and not only that, and and, and we got to wrap this up soon, so we're already over our hour. But let's 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 be real. Like I think it's going to come to. There's going to be a tipping point where they get burned, and if they don't get burned, guess what? These conferences won't have people at them because they will not be associated with the people that are going to them. So either these yep. conferences are going to burn them and Twitter's going to burn them or guess what? They're not going to have anybody there. So they're going to so lose money. And my, that's the my, only way we can do it. My warning was, you know, a lot of us a lot of us deserve a seat at the table. I s- dude, that is that was the best of- part of your video I saw was the seat at the table. A lot of us deserve a seat at the table, and if you're not gonna, and I, I've come to the conclusion that if you're not gonna give me a seat, I'm gonna build my own fucking table. Then, and then you and, know what? Let's build it. And when I and, and when that table gets built, don't come to me and get upset when your ass can't get through the door. That's that's how I. That's that that's the first thing I said. And then in my the know the know your worth talk, I said the other day. I said we've got to stop asking for permission for our, to be great. Yep. Right. So. I don't, like I said, this is the first time I'm meeting Shannon, but I can't help but think when I saw her start her own channel, the first thing I said was, go on, get it. I don't know her, but I was like, go on, girl, get it. Get Dude, it. When I first saw it. Thank you. When I right? first saw it, I said the same thing because at the end of the day, for me, I grew up with three older sisters. My wife right mm-hmm. now suffers in a house full of boys. The only girls we got in the house is a cat and a dog. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, right now it's, it's one of those things where I have always hated to see people held back based on what they look like, what parts they have. I mean, let's yeah. be real. Let's look at Alyssa who has been doing huge things for the industry and people still talk bad about her. Like mm-hmm. it's ridiculous just because no, of whatever reason you want to put on it and we're not going to get into it. But whatever reason you want to put out, put on it, they still talk bad about her. Alyssa Miller's doing huge things, and I'll tell you right now: if you don't appreciate Alyssa Miller, you got something. You got something wrong with you. I'm gonna tell you what it is: it's fair and ignorance. Oh, it is. Absolutely, it's fear and ignorance. I like. I don't. I don't need to know the details. I don't need to know the specifics. It's fear and ignorance. And and so no, let's wrap this up. Shannon, give so, me your, your your last final minutes. Me 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 and Davin have taken pretty much all the time. I'm I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you, you had, you had a good portion in the beginning, but then we kind of cut you out. And I, I really do apologize about that because having you on here is huge, but give me your final, you know, your final thoughts. Like where, what do we do? Um, uh, well, I think, I feel like we've already kind of covered that. Like with the whole, what do we do from here? We really need to give each other those seats at the table. We need to strive to like for us, for me and Davin, we are the people that younger generations are going to be looking up to. Like we are the forefronts. We are the faces that they don't necessarily always see when they look at cybersecurity. So that's been a huge motivator for me is like going to conventions and seeing a little girl and knowing that she wants to get into cybersecurity because she watches, you know, my shows. So that's always been a huge motivator for me. So we really need to continue, you know, building up, those communities, the people that don't look like the history of cybersecurity so that we can actually, we can be a new hacker manifesto. I love if it. If you will. I love it. Like we, we need to make our own hacker manifesto. I love it. That includes everyone, not just what, you know, 1990s hackers thought that cybersecurity was, but what it is now in 2020. I love it. I and love it. That's where I want to go from here is cool. just making this place 
a much more accepting place for everybody. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm all for it. And Davin, it was great hearing from you. It's great getting your feedback and, and where you came from, Shannon, same as you. And, and me and you talked. We had, you know, our hangouts and things like that with, with Threatwire. And look, I'm going to be honest. If y'all don't love this show, we got great people coming on. We got new people coming on. Let's just be real here. We've got a lot of things going on on Security Happy Hour. Drinks, good talks. Every once in a while, we'll hit some articles, but this one was just off off the chain. It, it was just amazing having Davin and Shannon on this show. So from here on out, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down bottom. Hit the alarm bell. If you love what you see, I do have this on podcast. It is on Apple Podcasts. It is on Spotify, and it is on Google and on top of that, I also have a Patreon. Go ahead and hit the link down bottom. Take it on and go ahead and be a patron. From here on out, this is Security Happy Hour. I'm Cyber Warrior. We've got Shannon. We've got Davin. Have a great evening. Shannon Morris knows my...